be turning your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel in the second chapter. We're going to read, uh, I'm sorry, the first chapter uh, a little bit there, and then we're going to get on. Uh, and what we want to talk to you this morning about a little bit, read to you a little bit about this morning is the watchman of God. And uh, uh, there is a lot of watchmen. And uh, I was thinking, as I was trying to study this, I'll give you a little story. I was in the Army. We had to walk guard. Uh, and it was in basic training. And uh, you have a sergeant of the guard. And uh, you go out and walk for two hours. And uh, then you get out four. But anyway, uh, so during that time, sometimes, why well, you get tired and sleepy. And you're walking right around your barracks. And uh, you know that bed's right close by. And so some of the guys, uh, they, they got this, they learned how to do this thing. Uh, there, was a, there was a fire escape in the back of the building. And so the sergeant of the guard would go around there and check the, uh, he, he challenged the soldier uh, that's walking guard. And so sometimes he couldn't find it. And so he'd come upstairs to where he used, his bunk was at. And uh, the sort of thing. sometimes the guard would take a little nap, you know. But and, and it was it was it was court martial offense that caught you. But anyway, uh, we they would learn how to uh, hide their their weapon, and, and uh, so when the when the sergeant of the guard come by and flashed his flashlight, he couldn't tell who was who. And so, cause everybody had their clothing on and their gear and all, so he he was looking for this guy, you know. And so the guy that knew it, he. He, he could hear him, and so he got up, and he'd go down the forest gate, and he started walking, and he'd meet the sergeant of the guard. He'd report to him. And so, I thought of this to, to, to bring this out. We were watching, and uh, we wasn't doing our job. Hmm. We wasn't doing our job. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of watchmen in this world today, uh, and we're going to read some that Ezekiel talked about, but there's a lot of watchmen in the world today that are not doing their job. And uh, that's, I believe, why that the world is uh, being burned up, why that the world is being uh, uh, performing all of these abortions and homosexual acts and all this, because the watchmen, uh, for one thing, has not told them, and the watchmen that have told them, and it's true, they haven't paid any attention to it. Right. And so these are some of the things this morning that we'd, uh, we'd like for to bring to your attention uh, as we read God's Word. In, in chapter 1, verse 26 of, of the book of Ezekiel, notice here he says, uh, and above the firmament, and this is the, this is the experiment that Ezekiel had that he's seen as God appeared to him. And uh, we've read it time and time again about uh, the wheel on the wheel and the, the, uh, all the elements and all this. But here's the end of the results of it. And above, in verse 26, chapter 1, <clears throat> And above the firmament that was over their head was the likeness of a throne. And this is the thing that Ezekiel saw. As the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire, round about within it, from the appearance of his loin, even upward, from the appearance of his loin, even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about it, as the appearance of the bowl that was in the clouds in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about it. Now, here's the thing. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Amen. Now, I've heard uh, so many people, and, you know, uh, what is this he's talking about? About the wheels and the bright lights and, and all of this. Well, Ezekiel saw the glory of the Lord. Right. And this morning, we as God's people need to experience a better view of the glory of God than we do sometimes. And it might draw us, it will draw us closer unto right. the Lord. So we wanted to read that in order to read over in, in chapter 2 and verse 1. 
And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon my thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that speak unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. And so Ezekiel did not have no easy task before him because God has already enlightened him on what he's going to find. And today, uh, Israel is no better. Right. Israel is no better, and our country is no better. You're right. Because we, as God's people, uh, the, 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 the United States, Israel, don't believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Uh, our country don't believe that it's uh, that they can pass laws and be able to uh, uh, kill a baby before it's born, uh, for men to marry men and to carry on such things as this. Right. And they think it's all right because our country has adapted to it and has passed laws to protect this thing. Well, listen. I've got news for them, and we all have news for them. Listen, it's wrong. Amen. It's a sin. Right. And they're going to have the same thing happen to them as did Israel. Now, Israel here, as the as Ezekiel was writing, this is going into captivity. They are down there now in captivity because they were hard-hearted. They, they would not listen to God's uh, uh, people or His... Uh, the. the uh, the uh, watchman, they wouldn't listen to it. So notice here now, as we as we go on, <clears throat> uh, in verse 4, and they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And so this morning I have, and, and, I, and I know this morning that our... Our Sunday school lesson is going out into the world. We have a, uh, a camera back there that's sending these words out. And there's people out there that's hearing this that know not the Lord. They know not what uh, it's all about. And I pray this morning that they'll open their ears and Amen. listen. And, and take heed because there's nothing but uh, a heartache and problems. And at the end... A lake of fire for them if they do not confess, if they do not uh, change their ways, if they do not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are doomed. And this is our responsibility as a watchman to tell them this thing. So here he says in verse 5 And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forswear, for they are a rebellious house, right. yet shall ye shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So, I'm telling you this morning, you that are listening here and there, listen, there is a hell to shun, and there is a heaven to gain, Amen. and there is a watchman to listen to, a true watchman that will tell you God's Truth, he will read to you the scripture and not what he says as much as his, what the, God's word says because God's word is true regardless of what the world says is, is good to do or what they say not to do. God's word is true and so we as you people need to listen. All of us needs to listen. So now he says here again uh, in verse, uh, I, want, I want to turn over now and read to you in 315 just a little bit. And uh, we'll get on to the remainder of the lesson. But in chapter 3, in verse 15, notice here. Then I came to them of the captivity at Talabad, that dwelt by the river Shebar. And I sat, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. Now why was he astonished? Why was he why was he there seven days? Well I believe this morning this typifies one thing. And this is when a man is that is called to preach and, and is and the Lord has appointed him to be a watchman. Listen, he he has days 
that he has to think about these things because the call of God is not, well, okay, fine, I'm gone. Listen, it takes time for a watchman to uh, accept the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, it, uh, and so he was our seven days, and he was astonished because of, of their condition. And right. he had told these people, he had told them time and time again, even after they were in captivity, hey, you need to do this and you need to do that. And they still did not listen. So here in, in verse uh, uh, let me look, uh, four, uh, 16, And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me. So here we see the responsibility of the watchman. And the watchman has, a, has the greatest uh, responsibility. Uh, a pastor that is called of God has the, the greatest responsibility. Uh, responsibility that can be placed on a man. You can put him in the White House, right. you can set him in as president, vice president, you can put him as treasurer, whatever you want to, and that's a great responsibility in the eyes of mankind. But listen, when a man is set as a watchman over a group of people, right. listen, that is the greatest responsibility. He has more responsibility on him than 19 presidents mm -hmm. of all the world. And listen, because listen, he is the one that that takes care of the messages that they need. He is the one that will warn them of the things that are going on. And listen, it's not because he slips around and looks in the window of a night and sees this thing going on or that, but God is speaking to him right. just like he was speaking here to Ezekiel. And he does not know. He does not know what he's, what he's, what he's warning the people about a lot of time. But listen, even if he sees something going on in the church, it's his responsibility Amen. to warn that church. And so here he says, he said, I have made you, in verse 17, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. He's not going to change the fact that the man is going to die in his in his right. sin. He's not going to change that. Uh, if he you know if he don't but no, notice he says here, uh, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So if God speaks to a, the watchman's heart and says you preach this message here and and he he studies that message and he says i don't see anything here that'll help the church that don't give him no responsibility to turn over to john three sixteen and start teaching there right. listen if he tells him to teach if it's in revelations or if it's in john or if it's in what romans whatever he needs to teach that amen and if he runs from it, listen, he keeps on. And listen to what he says here. And, and when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou give him not warning. Now, how do you tell a man that he is uh, and, and he's wicked and he's going to die in his sins? Well, you can preach the message that God gave you. And listen, that message is... For that man, and the Holy Spirit will take that message, and He will give it to that man, and He will be warned. Amen. But if that message is not preached, He's still going to die. And you ain't going to help that man a bit by not preaching it to him, but you will if you preach it to him, or if you teach it to him, or if you read the Bible to him about it. But listen, He says here, He says, But His blood will I require at thy hands. So, if, in verse 19, yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And so that's the that's the responsibility of the watchman. 
Amen. And the, you know, as I was speaking to you about the the uh, in the experiences I've had in the army. Listen, the the guard the guard is out there to protect those that are sleeping. Right. And the guard is not supposed to be up there sleeping while he's supposed to be on guard. So he's he is not doing what he's supposed to do. But the thing of it is. He is supposed to be guarding those people that are sleeping where that they can take their place next and he can go sleep. And if there's something comes up uh, and, and it threatens them, someone eight ball wants to set the barracks on fire and burn the whole bunch up, he can put a stop to it. And it's just like the thing, same thing with uh, the watchman that uh, uh, God has told to warn the people. Listen, he can warn that person and he can tell that person about this thing, and the devil cannot keep him hoodwinked and 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 see laugh at him when he comes to hell. See, so the the watchman's the watchman the watchman is the key to the whole thing. This morning, people, we 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 need a watchman, and we've got a watchman, and we need to we need to pray that his eyes will be wider open, that his brain will and be more on God's Word and that He can pro proclaim God's Word to us and that we can be here and have listening ears and open hearts to hear His Word. And if it hits us, just say, Oh me and thank you, Lord, because, right. listen, we don't rebel against the watchman. Amen. And I know this morning that there's people uh, that, that cuss as preachers and all this because he said, well, he know about this and about me. But listen, there's nothing that the watchman knows. I mean, it's God's Word. And it's like the man in the parable of the seed sower when he sowed the seed. The seed went everywhere. And right. when God's Word comes out, listen, the Holy Spirit takes that Word and works it in among the hearts of the, of the people. And listen... If it falls on good ground, fine. If it falls on bad ground, it's the same thing. But listen, it gets to where it's supposed to be. Amen. If God says, Watchman, you preach this message this morning, then that's what you need to preach. And that's what you need to continue. And I, I, and I, I, I say this to encourage our pastor. I, encur I, I say this this morning to encourage each one of the members here that he is watching out for to pray for him Amen. and hold him in all of these things and when it's all said and done we can we can say lord thank you because we served you and because we had a watchful uh, a watch a watchman over us that uh, told us right from wrong and uh you know it's 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 a that's what we're put here for. Amen. Is to get ready to go. That's it. And that's that's the only purpose. We not pit, not not put here to to, to put uh, uh, millions of dollars in the bank or to build uh, a twenty room uh, mansion or buy three Cadillacs. Listen, we're put here to serve the Lord, and we're put here to get right. ready Amen. to go. And when when that time comes then we can hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And we can say, praise the Lord for our pastor, our watchman. Now, <clears throat> a little bit more here in, the, in this thing here. Again, in verse 20, again, when a righteous man doth, doth turn from his righteousness and commits iniquity or commits sin, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sins, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. Now, people, this is serious stuff right here. He shall not, his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So he's still, he's talking to the, he's talking to the watchman again. Amen. The, the watchman is, the watchman is the one. And so, here he says, nevertheless, in verse 21, nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. So, it, it gets pretty sticky here, delivering thy soul, you know. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, it, 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 listen, it's destroyed in an error. It's destroyed in an error road, and people, we we sometimes we sometimes get awful uh, awful relaxed with, with this uh, with this uh, Christian attitude and with this thing, and say, oh well, I don't pertain to me, or or that's not right, or and that's not. But listen, God's word is true. Amen. And uh, so here again. In verse uh, 22, and the hand of the Lord was uh, was there upon me, and He said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plains, and I will there talk with thee. And then I arose and went forth into the plains, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw it by the river of Shebar, and I fell on my face. Amen. So again, He sees this, and He uh, He's uh, He's uh, uh, aware of the presence of the Lord now. Uh, one more place, and if you would turn to chapter 33, and I want to read just a few scriptures here. In verse 1 of chapter 33 of the book of Ezekiel. Alright, in verse 33 of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, again, notice here he says again. So he has told him he is the watchman. But again, let's notice. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their co co coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Now, uh, you think with me just a minute when he's saying about blowing the trumpet. You're walking down the street, and you're walking in the middle of the street, and someone comes up behind you with a car, and he blows the horn, and you keep walking. Now, this is, this is the same type of a thing. You're not, you're not heeding. You're not heeding what the horn is saying, like move over or you're, you'll get hurt. And here's the same thing with this, with this, with this man here that's blowing the trumpet, or he's preaching God's word to you, and he's saying to you, "Listen, you do, you need to quit doing this, or you don't do this, or this or that." Listen, it's a warning to us, and he says uh, here, then who in verse four, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning. If the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be up on his own head. So right. he's not got anybody to blame. Right. He's not got anybody to blame. And listen, this morning we 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 have we have had people and probably have people now that are listening to us that are not saved. And listen, I know this morning that a sinner cannot say, "All right, God, I've heard that, and now save me." But I I say this this morning that you that are listening to this reading this morning and are not saved and know that you're not saved, you heed the warning. Amen. You go, you you have the privilege and the knowledge to go to God and ask Him to save your soul. You mm -hmm. have that privilege. Amen. And, and, and that's why that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me and, and that we might have this opportunity to go to the Lord and ask His forgiveness of our sins and ask Him to save us. And so listen, if He hasn't saved you yet, you keep on, you keep on, and you keep on, and, 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 and I want to use this word, aggravating God. You, like the man that went, and I, I told him here, uh, uh, asking for some loaves of bread because he had company coming and he didn't have none. And he said, I need this. And the man said, go away, I've got children in bed and I can't bother with you. But he said, the man, the Bible says that he, he said, but he kept on knocking. And the Bible says for his continual knocking, the man got up out of bed and gave him the bread. Now that's the reason I say this morning to you and to all that's listening, if there's one that's not saved and, he's, and they've been crying out to God to, to, to stir their hearts and to save them, listen, if it's not happened, don't give up. 
Be patient with God, but continue to worry Him. Continue to bother Him. Continue to be uh, there every every time you have an opportunity. Lord, forgive me and save my soul. I don't want to go to die, die and go to hell. And that's that's important to a person that has been raised up in church. Mm -hmm. And God has never spoke to him. God has never saved him. Listen, continue praying. Continue Amen. asking him. Because listen, people, he will not deny you. Amen. He will not deny you if, if you continue praying because he's wanting to see how sincere you are. And uh, so that's my advice to you. Continue praying. Continue asking. And you that have loved ones that are lost and you know that they're lost and you know you don't see no fruits, you continue praying. And you continue worrying God. You continue after because listen, he will he he's not tired of it. He is not tired because he is happy with the thoughts of you praising him by asking him to do this magnificent, glorious, beautiful thing. Amen. Because he wants he wants he, he sent His Son to die on the cross of Calvary for all those that would uh, accept Him, all those that He had chosen. And so listen, He's not going to uh, turn His back on a prayer, please Lord, save my soul. He's, I mean, I just can't... Uh, I, I believe that He hears. I believe that He does because Jesus Christ is our Savior and He Amen. said on the right hand of the Father and He's telling Him these things and He's hearing these things. And He's hearing them from someone that's closer to Him than I am or you are. He's hearing them from His own Son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross of Calvary for us that we might be saved. And so, here again, in verse 6, listen to this. Verse 6 of chapter 33. But if the watchman see the sword come and blows the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Right. So now we understand a lot of times why that the preacher <coughs> will get up and he will do everything he can. He waves an arm, he stomps his feet, he, he teaches this lesson. Two days later, or two Sundays later, he teaches about the same thing. Listen, he's doing it for your benefit. Mm -hmm. He's doing it because God has laid it upon his heart. And if he's doing it for any other reason, listen, he needs to get forgiveness. But I believe this morning that we hear the gospel here. I believe that we hear what God has appointed for us to hear every Sunday. And a lot of times, it goes in one ear and out the other. But a lot of times, it hits the heart and the soul of someone here and lifts them up. Amen. This morning, if it does, you should come to the pastor and say, Thank you, thank you for preaching what God told you to preach. And uh, you'll be a better person for it, and he will be much, uh, he won't walk around, <laughs> but listen, he'll be more freer at heart. Mm -hmm. And he can go at home tonight and rest and say, Thank you, Lord, because you give me that message. So this is our lesson this morning and I hope that I hope that something has been said that will will help you and uh, and stir your heart and give you a little bit better uh, view of the watchman. We have a watchman. And he he's uh, he don't do like uh, some of the incidents I told you about in the uh, but he, uh, he preaches the word to you. And he, I, I, I believe with all my heart, he prays for you. And uh, I think that probably that uh, he goes around from seat to seat in his prayer. He calls out the names. He says, Lord, be with you. Bless him. Help him. So you know what you've got now. So thank you all. And I like it. You, you, you knew all the time. But anyway, I will refresh your memory. Okay? Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you.